Hey everybody, it's Steve, and I'm here today to do a quick video about two things. One is it's Splinterlands Raffle Day, and the other thing I want to do is recap the new rule sets and the new uh, rewards cards that came out in the game. So it's a post that's going to be a lot about some of the rewards that we all get for being either land buyers or just players of the game. And I'm going to show you what I won, which I don't even know yet, so this is going to be pretty fun. So first, I want to bring up this little screenshot to over, and we'll go over this really quick. I took this. This is just looking at, uh, this was 20 minutes before the draw. I couldn't quite get my setup going in time to do this exactly live. But these are the prizes up for grabs for anyone that doesn't know about the Splinterlands land sale raffle. For anyone that bought tickets for each one, or I'm sorry, bought land, for each $1 you spent, you got a raffle ticket and then you also got raffle tickets if you provided liquidity to their uni swap pool uh, for their dark energy crystals and I did both I ended up with a little over 2,000 tickets I sold some of the tickets around 200 of them um, to get a little bit of hive because I didn't know what I was gonna win I wanted to at least get some of these epic and legendary totems if I don't win any right now I'll be a little disappointed but I did pull aside a little bit of Hive so I can see if there's anybody who are looking to get rid of these because they don't want to wait for them to come out. And then I can pick them up. I can maybe try some trading. I have some extra plots. We'll see what happens. Nobody really knows what the market's going to value these at. They're not useful until land is actually live and they're not even fully understood what they'll do. The general idea is that if you have a land plot that produces something that's needed to craft a card you're going to produce more of it if you do this kind of stuff so it's it's an interesting item for sure i kind of feel like the legendary totems are going to be pretty valuable but we can't know that for sure yet because we don't know what cards we can craft and so if the ca the cards you can craft aren't as useful as we think they're going to be and then they're going to be probably pretty useful. Be we think that because it's when they're going to introduce spells and equipment to the game. And we're going to be crafting, from what I understand, spells and equipment cards. All of this is, has a bit of speculation to it because none of this is finalized yet by the Splinterlands team. As you can see, I have 2,000 tickets out of this huge amount. So my chances of winning this best prize and these prizes are pretty low. I probably have a pretty good chance of getting some rare totems and some packs. And I might get a land plot or two. I'm not really looking for any more land unless I pull a, a claim, a, a track or a region just because those are so valuable that it would just be cool to win one of those. And then um, we'll go over the rule set post. I have that right over here. Um, the new rule set and all the new cards. I'll kind of give you a breakdown of what I think, you know, think of them and things like that. It's something I like to do just to give you my opinion of some of the cards. But first, if you just want to have a little fun with me, let's go see what I won. So we'll go to the raffle tab. I get to claim my prizes. So let's see if we got lucky. I don't know what I'm going to get. I didn't realize I could have just recapped everything there. So there is six things there. So that's kind of interesting. Um, there's definitely probably packs because those are the biggest two prizes that would be two of the flips and then there would be um, either totems or plots i think it's probably nice to see six different things to turn unless there 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 are things that are both let's see do they do any okay they don't glow but i don't know if they're supposed to glow we'll start with this one 66 common totems so that's not bad that's a good amount of common totems um common totems will definitely be useful to throw on the common lands and 66 is not a bad number okay dice packs uh, of the packs that were out there i did want to win dice packs because i don't have that many i got 17 of those that's pretty cool i got three epic totems so that's pretty cool i don't know if i'm gonna get a legendary <laughs> Because I only got three more flips, but at least I got three of the epic ones. Let's see here. I got 14 rare totems. Like I said, I did think I'd have a good chance at getting a decent amount of the common and rares. So that's not terrible. And then, let's see what's here. I haven't got any land yet, so that's interesting. There's the booster packs. 
So that's a 28 booster packs of regular untamed. It's not terrible. I need more untamed cards. And I have potions, so I'll go ahead and be opening these. I'll be opening these first, though, just to, in case I run out of my free potions. Okay, so I've already got the, the three kinds of totems. And I've got the uh, both the kinds of packs. So let's see, what could this last flip be? Let's look at this really quick. And just build a little suspense, right? It'll probably not be that cool. So I already got this, 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 and this. So the last flip <laughs> has to be either a legendary totem, a land plot, a land track, or a land claim. So we're just hoping for it to not be a land plot, but that's what has the highest percentage chance for it to be, right? Because there were 1,000 of these and only 200 of these. So it's time to see what that last one is. Ah, two plan plots. <laughs> Still, though, I'm happy that I got the three epic totems. That's not terrible. As we saw, there are only um, a thousand of those, and I got three of them. I got a, a good little chunk of the rares at 14, and I got 66 of the commons. Um, I'll probably be looking to pick up more of these commons because some people might be selling them pretty cheap. A little disappointed I didn't get that legendary. I didn't really expect to get these. I mean, 1 in 10, only a few people are getting those. But, you know, when you roll those dice, you get what you get, right? But still, it's fun. This was all bonus items that I got just for taking part in the land sale. And it's nice to just have some of this stuff fresh out of the gate. Items that will be used in the land world. And some additional cards to help my collection. Both of sets that I don't have finished yet. All right, so now let's go ahead and get to the post. So now firstly, we'll talk about, and I'll try to do these a little quick. If you just wanted to hang out to see what I won, you can take off. But if you're interested in what I think of the new rule sets and the new cards, you can stick around now. So we got Stampede. This is the one that Aggro wanted. It, this is how the game originally played. Only, only the people in the very beginning know about this because it made the Stampede monster so broken, they took it out pretty quick. Because basically, a, a Rexy or the, the Unicorn from the Life team, um, the new legendary guy on the Dragon, I mean on the Fire team, any of those big trample monsters, they can just tra they could trample through an entire team. And there were some funny videos back then, so I can't wait to see some people maybe sharing some battles of when a Rexy kills somebody's entire team because it'll just trample through every single monster. So obviously, if you play in this game mode, you need to be prepared for monsters, big monsters that have uh, trample. You probably want to play cards on your side that have trample, and then I would honestly be looking to play stunners. Because if you can stun that trample monster and stop it from getting going, then you're going to have a better, better chance of winning. Uh, Noxus Fumes is a mode where we all start out poisoned. Poisoned is very interesting because you armor does not help against poison so poison is one of the things that kind of prevents you from playing any of those say high void monster uh, high level uh void armor monsters or, or just any of the monsters that have a ton of armor poison is definitely this is not a mode that i think a lot of people are going to want to play the life team in even though the life team does have a decent amount of cleanse monsters so you could give it a shot um I'm thinking that the Llama teams would be strong in this mode. And other than that, you're just going to have to look through your team for how many people you have that have good life, that have self-heals so that they can maybe get that life back when they lose poison, and who have cleanse. Also, it's going to be interesting to see if people try to play, say, a Mimosa team with high HP monsters, just hoping that they will prevent you from being able to heal. That's maybe not the best play because you're probably going to have a lot of people playing cleanse monsters. And so you're, you're, when they get cleansed of poison, they'll also get cleansed of um, the ability to not be healed. So that's, that's maybe not the best idea, but it's just one I thought would be kind of funny if people were trying to play a bunch of self-healing monsters instead of cleansing monsters and you prevented them from healing. Then that would give you a big advantage. Uh, now we'll talk about equal opportunity. So this one's kind of interesting. Opportunity is a pretty fun skill. There's not that monster, that many monsters that have it. So the idea that any monster can have opportunity, it's just going to be one more of those modes where it's 
you can kind of come up with some interesting combos and play all melee monsters if you want to. It's also an opportunity to go counter to this narrative and play all mages and try to maybe put some targets on the board with low HP that have high armor uh, that'll get hit attacked quite often and that'll be if you can there's the one four cost guy who has thorns one life and a whole bunch of armor that's kind of interesting for this mode you also maybe want to incorporate anybody who has shatter um in this mode or rust because you could see a lot of people expecting there to be a lot of melee on the board and so trying to get their monsters to have armor that's another theory is for you to get your monsters to have armor all of these modes should be fun it'll be nice to have something new in the game when you're playing sometime and it'll be interesting to see who can adjust and get really the best lineups for these modes. Maybe I'll do another little talk about these after I've actually played them and seen some other teams, uh, you know, do some setups that work really well. Now let's go talk about the new rewards cards. So the rewards cards are always fun. Every time we, we get one of them out of print, they go ahead and issue new ones. We had a lot of commons go out of print and uh, some other cards that are about to go out of print. And so anyways, they went ahead and issued a lot of new ones out into the set and they're pretty cool. So both of the water ones, as I've looked at them, is really moving the water team away from being just a magic team. They had already started to work uh, themselves away from that, but these two cards will help it even more that you can now play a melee team and a range team on the water team with the new summoner from Untamed or with the um, legendary, the little little deep water or with Bordis because those guys don't help your, ma your mages. So a lot of the mages were designed in um, the water team to be used with a plus one magic. You have both Arturius, Arturius and Lord, I forget, is it Valamore? I don't have him, so I forget his name. They both give more magic. But because of that, when you use those cards in a team that is not giving them a magic boost, they're not quite on the same level as some other cards. They can still win because magic is strong, and if the other team isn't ready to counter magic, then they, you're going to dominate that fight because magic is pretty strong when people are not ready for it. But these cards move you into a place where you can play those sets and then you can play these cards. Because picture this tank with with the, the little deep water giving additional armor and adding on return fire. So now he would be a monster with good HP, good speed, good attack. Not great attack, six to three, but he would give, be giving himself one more so he'd have four really. And then he'd be giving the rest of the team more attack. And then they also would, you'd have that ability of everybody shooting back range so this, this is an interesting lineup for something like no mages or just just to kind of surprise somebody who you think might be running Prince Renin or, or Selena. And then they follow that up with the Axe Master, who is just a big uh, ranged attacker who also has double strike. So this is kind of crazy. He also has the up close ability, so he can end up in the front row and keep attack. And then he has cripple. Cripple, to me, it, I haven't seen it be super effective. I know when people say it's kind of effective, it can counteract a scavenge. Um, it, it really can work good against, say, like the cube if you're hitting him and twi twice and stuff like that. Th this is the first monster that I think will really, really show me maybe that that skill is really well because a double strike cripple on a monster with a lot of HP will help uh, counteract some of the things that boost their HP. Because when you just do a one turn, one cripple a turn, you're only keeping place, pace with a scavenge monster if monsters are dying. You're not really lowering their HP. You're not really getting that heal to not be as effective. So this monster hitting twice and lowering the HP so much because he's gonna be hitting for at least six. If you boost him at all, he'll be hitting for eight then that's pretty cool. The one thing I would note at four speed with three um, attack each time and a seven cost, I mean, I could see him missing sometimes and it being a real bummer because of the cripple. Um, and I, I, I hopefully it won't happen as much as I'm thinking, but it's possible. Okay, got to get going a little quicker here. So Nightmare. Nightmare is a new big ranged, uh, I mean, new big melee monster for the 
the death team it's an interesting card because it has a new ability that allows magic to miss it and that's pretty cool we'll have to, uh, with seven speed uh, to start and on a team that has some abilities to slow the other team down and to weaken their magic and if you use him on a high mono match with mimosa you're talking about he'll have void as well so even when magic hits him it'll only take half and it, he can get missed by that he can get missed by normal attacks he has a lot of hp you can throw a healer behind him you can throw cards out there like the new one cost uh epic guy the shadowy presence that gives him and then so you can see easily you can pump this guy's hp up to like 15 have him have a healer behind him have him have four attacks seven speed and be hard to hit it's a lot of fun it's a cool card because right now there's only really two viable tanks in the death team for the high mana matches and they're both legendary cards so if somebody doesn't want to spend the money to have that maxed out lord of darkness or that maxed out um oh what am i for the 10 cost one i forget his name right now but most of you probably know the card if you don't have those two cards maxed out and you want one that you can compete with at high levels you can get this one and get him up to say level eight and he'll be pretty solid with 12 hp you probably want to get him to nine if you're playing at a level where you could play him at nine and then over time work on getting him up to that last level 10 uh, you could wait until maybe you farm some of them in the rewards chest and just buy them to get them up into like this level in here Depend or just wherever you know it is that you want to play them Obviously, he'll be a lot more effective once you get him to level six So if you're using him down here in the lower leagues, I, I don't know how effective he'll be when magic can't miss him um, Because he's his high speed he will be vulnerable to magic But there's some ways you can get around that you can play the summoner that gives him magic reflect with all that HP At least he'll probably kill a lot of the mages that kill him and you'd be able to give him the void if you have a mimosa So those are those are good things to help counteract his apparent weakness to magic down in here then they also got the Dark Ferryman. This one's pretty cool because it gives them another ranged monster. It also gives them a monster that has the, I think this is, uh, what is this one? Let me double check. Dispel. Yeah, that's the new ability. So this one's kind of interesting because you've already got uh, the death team that can put a lot of negative enhancements on the other team and now you can have a monster on the board that can remove them the other thing that's awesome about dark ferryman is he adds into death's team really impressive lineup of monsters about two to three mana they have one of the better sets of people who can come out in a 13 mana game and field an entire board and you go wow these guys are all strong i mean three attack three speed and six health for only three cost that is a really really solid maxed out card so i'll definitely be, be looking to add this one to my team and then you add in there's the, there's the cripple more cripple monsters might make cripple more effective maybe the reason why in my opinion it hasn't seemed that impactful might just be because i've only been able to play one now i can try to play, maybe play two or three on a team and then you're talking about lowering a big monster's hp by three uh, even so that even if you only almost kill him and he goes to get healed he won't get filled up all the way there's nothing more annoying than seeing your team hit a big tank down to like three and then have him two tanks and self heal and all of a sudden he's at full life so this is kind of a counter to that so that's kind of an interesting one then we have the chain splitter this is for the life team this tank is basically the idea of you know it, it's a cool card because the life team has revive so you can use the summoner that has a revive you can use the angel that has the revive you can use the new mage that has the revive and all of those cards will always give him back 10 life so if you put him up in the front row and he's sitting there with the 10 armor only the 3 hp and then the chain splitter the, the having the void armor so magic's going to hit his armor it's going to be a very annoying tank to get through if he's getting revived a couple times now obviously the big thing he has to avoid is shatter but shatter doesn't get used a lot today maybe now in the future you'll have to really consider maybe if you you're seeing somebody who might be playing life that you might need to throw that shatter monster on the board so that you can get rid of that armor and once you get, pop his armor he relatively is easy to kill especially because he's slow so you're not going to miss him 
but it's a very interesting card for only five cost and a low 20 mana match you could see him played maybe with one revive behind him and you're talking about a frontline character that if you can't shatter you got to go through 20 three so a 10 and one and 10 and three to, to get rid of him i mean that's going to take you quite a bit if all of your attack is hitting this front row and you don't have a lot of attackers the temple priest is a pretty strong card for five costs to do four magic damage it's just adding to the magic and the mage lineup for the life team they used to really be a ranged team now they are a ranged team and a magic team it makes them a lot stronger he has the new dispel ability which will be a, a fun to see used as you can remove a lot of good status effects it's definitely a strong card um It'll be a nice replacement and a good like mid cost mage because they were kind of missing that. They have some three cost mages, they have a four cost mage, they definitely have the big 10 and eight cost mages, but now they have a mage that you can play kind of in the middle of the board, which is a nice change for them. It's also a change to be able to use him, you know, a, a solid HP. He's a little slower, but it's magic, so it doesn't matter. Bounce back won't kill him super fast because of that extra HP. So it's it's a good overall mage card. I can definitely see this being one that will get played and used quite a bit. And once we see it in battle, we'll kind of see how good this dispel ability ends up being. The Minotaur is kind of an interesting card. I like the fact that he has an ability called True Strike, which allows him to not miss even though he has two speed. But to me, I feel like this card's only gonna make a lot of play on the fire team if you don't have the new 10 cost legendary summoner because he is just so good that if you have the mana i don't imagine you're not going to use him so the only time you would use this one is maybe in a malay uh madness or that new opportunity one because he has huge hp and he can't miss and he retaliates so you would maybe want to put him in a position where people are hitting him and he's going to retaliate and he's also not going to miss once he attacks because I can kind of, if, if Retaliate and the Don't Miss work together, which I think they will, that means if he gets hit and he attacks back and it's the front row versus front row, he's going to deal 10 damage that first turn to that front row position. So it's a fun card. I just, I'm not, I don't love, love it, but it is also kind of like the other big nightmare. While the Death Team has some good ta big tanks and the Fire Team also has some very big good cards, this one will be a lot cheaper. So if you're somebody who's newer to the game, it's definitely a solid card to get because you can have a tank in the front row that won't miss even though it's slow. And because of the fact that it's slow, it has higher attack and HP than a monster, say, would have as fast. And that has to do with how they make the cards, right? If he was like a four speed monster, he'd probably end up losing an attack and an HP because of the way they build them to be fair. But now he can be a two cost that still has five attack, a uh, two speed with five attack and 13 life because he has an ability that makes him not miss. So that's kind of a, a fun way to get a really, really strong monster for you to use. The uh, Efrit Elder is the mage for the fire team. This one's kind of interesting. He has last stand and he has the ability for magic to miss him. He's got a ton of life for a six cost card. So we're talking about 10 life, a solid speed, a mage, and then he has last stand. It kind of is a fun little card for you to play on your team as it gives the fire team finally somebody you can throw in that last position that can have last stand. And he works really well with some of the new cards on the fire team that have taunt that you can put in the front row that'll, that'll attract the damage, get hit, and there's a better chance that you might have this mage end up being your last stand monster. And then you could have a big old high HP, high magic dealer as your last person that's gonna attack and try to win that game for you. So it should be a fun card to use. I definitely wouldn't mind having this one. It's also kind of a replacement for the Elemental Phoenix it's not quite as good because it doesn't have blast innately but at the same time it costs one less mana and if you use it with zaku then it has blast so it would be a similar card for the new players but a lot more obtainable because it's not an old alpha beta legendary and you can have that big mage sitting at the end uh doing the big splash damage attacking relatively fast and then getting even stronger if it's your last card so that's a pretty fun one the uh this is an interesting card the harvester for the life team it's a five cost i'm not really sure where he exactly fits in 
Uh, maybe the 20 mana matches, if you don't want to use Flesh Golem or you don't have Flesh Golem, you could try this one. It, he is not very interesting attack if you think you're going to be running into, say, a Lord A or a Cube because he has Oppress and he can do double damage to them. But if it's Lord A, he'll only do equal damage. So he definitely seems like a card built to maybe help you kill the Cube because he's not super fast, so you imagine he's gonna get hit, so then his enrage is gonna pop off, and then he's gonna hit the cube because he'll attack before, you know, before the cube gets to heal, and he might be able to deliver a blow that finishes off the cube, cube if, he, if you've got some kind of attack buffs and he ends up hitting him for 10 or 12 damage. That, that's a pretty, pretty impressive hit. At the same time, he's only uh, got 10 life and three speed, but life, on the that's probably enough on the life team you'll either have a healer behind him or you'll have somebody who's buffing his hp so he should get at least one big attack off and it'll be a devastating attack if he's going against the right person it it's a card that maybe won't be as effective if you don't have anybody on the board to attack that doesn't have any life but i do know the cube the cube has been dominating some games so this looks like a bit of an answer to the cube kind of funny to see it on a team that's actually known for using the cube but still it's a it's a it's a good card there's nothing terrible about it it's a common so it'll be cheap and if you don't have any of those mid-range melee monsters that cost five on the life team because you're a newer player this is a, this is a solid one that you can put out on the board all right now for the last card this is the Al, the what is it almo cambino this is a very interesting card it's the only legendary card from the set and it's a legendary neutral and really, to me, this looks like the replacement of the Gentle Giant for most of us. I'm going to be looking to get this card and get it maxed out because I never did max out my, my Peaceful Giant. And so I don't have that big uh, no-attack monster to put in the front row. He also is a very interesting card because magic can miss him. If it does hit him, he bounces it back. If he gets hit by ranged, it gets bounced back. And he has that ability to make it so that you cannot uh, get him any weaker with any effects in the game, which means he's a monster that you could always be able to heal, which is a pretty interesting thing to see because that, that high HP on a team that can buff him and then the, uh, you throw him on a team that can heal him and they can always heal him and he's going to sit there in the front row bouncing back a lot of different attacks now obviously his weakness will be a really big hard hitting melee monster so you'll have to think about that when you use him you could try to give him a little bit of armor which would help counteract say a big melee attack or you could just not save him for matches where you don't expect to see a lot of melee monsters uh, that would be similar to um, you know the one where everyone uses their loses their abilities i don't know why i'm blanking on that right now but you know this has been a pretty long video so i just want to wrap it up there um the, all the new rewards cards are really cool i'm pretty happy with my with my uh rewards i won in the giveaway today i'm going to be taking a look at those if i had won something really big i was going to give away like if i had won a legendary and got some epics i probably would have gave away an epic maybe i'll give away a rare token totem i'll think about it uh, I'll type it up in this post. If you watch the whole thing, you just got to give me some feedback on one of the cards that I reviewed, on my prizes I won, just some kind of comment that let me know you watched at least some of this video, and then I will uh, enter you into the drawing. I'm going to decide on the prize in the next couple days because I'm not going to post this right away, and then it'll be in the description what I'm giving away. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.